Hello everyone, Vlad is here. Well, I hope you missed me. I haven't been online for quite a while. I guess since uh, beginning of summer, I was really busy. As you know, there was a great big show in Oshkosh as usual every year. And uh, this year we were participating in the air venture at the vendors. So that was a big, big job to to prepare for the first time ever for this show for, for myself, and for my company, for my family. The show was great, amazing, met lots of uh, nice people, uh, made, made a new friends, well, everything is great. I'm um, keep flying my airplane, my RV-10, nothing changed there, everything is fine. Hours are clicking and, uh, well, engine is happy, airplane is happy, uh, not really any issues or problems, still working on some parts to improve, little here and there, I will tell, talk about that in my future videos for sure. What else? Uh, avionics field, well that's my primary field now actually, I do this as a full-time job now, I work full-time on my avionics projects, so I do lots of research, development, creating new products, new ideas, uh, contacting contacting with uh, various US-based uh, avionics manufacturers, uh, signing agreements, adding support of their products, lots of interesting things is happening. And of course, I'm um, keep bucking rivets into my second RV10, which, as you remember, I was working on previously. So, well, everything one by one. Well, first of all, Oshkosh. Oshkosh, uh, I mean, we can talk about Oshkosh like for hours in this video. Uh, for those of you who have not been ever yet at Oshkosh, who never, never visited, I really recommend visit it once and probably you will stay there forever by visiting every year. It's, it's, it's an amazing place. I, I, it's very hard to describe, especially for me, for the experimental aviation lover, it's really hard to to explain that in one place every year you can find so many interesting people so many interesting airplanes designs concepts models it's, it's just attended for us it was well it was quite an experience well first of all we were driving there as you know i was building that camper van preparing it for our trip well so far so good Van did his job and brought us there and back with some issues, but anyway, uh, at Oshkosh, uh, since it was my first visit, I really was not uh, prepared how, like, uh, to be honest, I've never attended any trade shows like that. I've been at some trade shows, but it was related to automotive industry. Here it's like really different. So I had this little stand with me there, but as I realized, it's just like little stand, which didn't reflect, which couldn't reflect all of what I'm developing, designing and doing. So for the next year, and yeah, I just forgot to tell you that next year in 2025, we will be again attending Oshkosh as a vendors. And this time we're going to be right next to the aircraft spruce. So actually we're going to be in the main line where aircraft spruce is. So we're just going to be next to them. So yeah, and uh, we, we demonstrated as much as we could our products I met so many people uh, I was impressed like so many people <laughs> and uh, some visitors some people came to visit my kids <laughs> it was really funny but a uh, few families came with their kids to say hi to my kids because they are actually watching our channel and they were watching how my kids helping me building airplane that's so cool you know my kids were so happy to be honest like they were super happy super happy like on the way back they were only talking about the fact that someone came to really meet with them well i'm really happy thank you for all those of you who came with your kids to to say hi to my kids for them it means a lot because well they're little young they spend lots of 
time with me building that airplane and for them it was like really really rewarding that visit of course I met many uh, many people who came to say hi to me again very nice people uh, it was really nice to meet all of you thank you for coming and I hope if you attend in 2025 Oshkosh show you will show up and say hi again I will be very happy to meet with you again and um, well yeah uh, also many many people were every day during the seven days were passing by to say hi to look at my products ask questions comparisons and that really helped me to to be prepared for next year with more correct and more professional answers I would say about my product because I really I really got lots of questions which many of which I uh, I documented just to first of all to to understand to better understand what market what wants to have what people wants to buy what people what are the people needs in avionics also for the next year I will have more new products which are really cool really interesting and I hope that gonna that gonna uh, surprise some of you who was just talking about that during this Oshkosh and asking me and who will see those products next year. During Oshkosh I met with um, uh, some major uh, small and big scale um, experimental and not only experimental avionics manufacturers. We signed some agreements, I added some support for a couple of new products into my avionics. So that's really a part which which was good and I hope I'll keep working more on that to 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 bring to bring you more products avionics uh, about avionics um, this was the my primary flight display which I designed first model ALM 1000 and we just recently finished designing and developing this little guy but despite it's little it's as powerful as this one this is the ELM 800 which is smaller 8 inches uh, touch display so that's the probably one of the interesting products which we want to show next year like small tiny slim good for uh, for uh, narrow panels and we already have uh, a few customers for this product who are waiting for their uh, products to receive and install so maybe maybe fingers crossed but maybe next year even one of those airplanes will fly down to Oshkosh with our product um, finally I completed design of the smart trim controller which I was working on for some time this uh, device I want to a little bit more elaborate about so as you know when I was building RV10 uh, at some point I was need to add a trims right trims and uh, trims and um, flaps control so the way how trims designed and work in my RV10 are um, small motors and each motor has inside built-in resistive sensor so that motor obviously moves the trim up and down in my airplane I have a trim for the pitch for the roll and I have option to install the rudder trim as well so, uh, usually what you do is either you build some relay module with a relays because you need to connect the buttons and if you want to be able to control those, um, those trims from your stick, if you, if you have a controls on the stick, if you want to control from separate button, like depends how you want to design it, but in my case, both left and right pilot sticks can control roll trim and pitch trim and also uh, there is a button to control pitch trim separate button so for that case I had to build some relay model add some relay inside well which was I mean it's not really cool I mean it's old school right it's a relays really old school but it works until uh, it, it worked until some moment but I was always willing to design something which will make installation of the trims simple so I just designed a smart trim model which First of all, can control pitch, roll, rudder trims, can control the uh, flaps. So it has a flaps controller, it has the circuit breakers, uh, digital circuit breakers inside. It's controllable from my aphesis, 
it gives a feedback to FS about the position of your um, of your trim. So actually, like this type of a smart model in a standard format in the format of the box, which is really cool to have. So I I build that it has some even analog inputs if you want to connect uh, door sensors and some additional sensors. So I build that and uh, yeah, that's that's one. That's another product which I also um, finished after Roshko. Not sure if I was showing that in the video before, but I just grabbed a regular um, iDrive, so-called iDrive controller from a German manufacturer, one of the German manufacturers. This thing is usually installed in the under the arm, in under on the in the armrest of the vehicle to control the multimedia screens like navigation maps and everything. And I, I realized at some point that I need some. So the story is actually how the story started is I realized that during the Oshkosh I will need to demonstrate um, to my potential customers how my uh, primary 10-inch flight display will will work. So I was need some sort of a remote control because it was not really cool to move with my finger on touch screen in the front of the customer. I thought I need something to remotely control it. So I just took regular vehicle iDrive uh, thing, I wired it up, I wrote some code, made it uh, to be able to control, fully control all functions of my uh, FS because this thing actually it's you can rotate it in any of the direction like a knob. You can push on it like a knob. You can use it like a joystick up, down, left, right. So it has like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven controls in this disc. Plus you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons on this thing. So I programmed all buttons, made a special menu where I can assign each of those buttons to specific function. And I start to use it during the Oshkosh. And uh, customers started to, potential customers started to uh, approach me and I was showing them how this thing works. And someone told me like, hey, I, how much is that? I said like, well, it's for, it's for demo, right? He said, yeah, I want it to my airplane. And I realized that that can be a product. So, and what do you think? Yeah, I kept it in, uh, in my software. I improved that, so now it's a product. And what's the positive moment about it? When you fly and you focused on your um, horizon, you focused on your outside of your airplane, if you need to change some functions, instead of touching the screen, especially when it's choppy, bumpy, you just put your hand here and with a convenience like you do it in your vehicle, you do it in your airplane. So that thing is really cool. Well, and finally my uh, second RV10 build. I'm progressing. So I'm already working on the fuel tanks. Yeah, I know some one of you will say, hey Vlad, the first RV10 you built in three years, you did it like quite fast. But you know what, I'm enjoying. That's my second RV10. I don't need it tomorrow. I don't need, I don't need it even in a half year because I have RV10 to fly. So I'm enjoying. But of course, uh, to be honest, I'm, uh, I was really busy with avionics, with all that stuff, so it's lots of work. But uh, whenever I have a free time, I work, and my wings are my, my, my wings are assembled. My uh, what else? Yeah, now with the fuel tanks, the next step will be the leading edges attached to wings and assembled. Fuel tanks. I plan to put everything on Clico, prepared on Clico, and keep it for now. I'm not going to be um, uh, going with the tank sealant for now. Not yet. Later on. Next step will be flaps, um, ailerons. Once I'm done with the wings, I will start to work on my fuselage. My fuselage kit is waiting. It's all packed and um, inventoried, and it's waiting for me to keep um, uh, bucking the rivets. So the next will be my uh, fuselage kit. Tear apart my IO540 engine. This guy. I'm going to be tearing it apart, put everything in separate bins, mark everything, me and uh, my uh, good buddy, who is AME, AMO, who is specialist in those engines, we will send together some parts for the inspection. And after that, I plan to rebuild this engine. So the new series of my videos, hopefully in 2025, second half of 2025, will be about 
the IO540 rebuilt in a hangar. So that's another part of what I plan to do for the next year in addition to my avionics. I see all of you in my next video and I'm back and I will keep releasing those videos now. So I see you in a couple of weeks with a more about what I'm doing, what I'm working on, more about avionics, airplanes and uh, in the meantime message me if you have any questions. We'll be happy to answer. Bye everyone.